I just gotta say this It is no secret, I'm feeling so great I'm riding that starship That took me straight to the highest place On top of the world Okay, uh, welcome to week 14 We are now at the final topics of Advanced Native Mobile Programming course, okay? So in these final topics, I will discuss mostly about knowledge and concept of how to make a, a better Android apps, okay? So um, we are going to discuss three things, yeah? First, um, about how to publish your app in the Play Stores, and second part is about the app performance, how to increase or how to improve the app performance. And finally, we need to understand some basic knowledge about application security in Android, okay? So let's jump into our first topics with how to publish your app in Play Store, okay? So um, before we continue, I just need you to know that um, in this topic, I'm not uh, doing any project, yeah? Doing, in not creating a new project. And this topic, I just uh, give you knowledge, give you give you a concept, yeah, uh, and theory about um, the content of the week 14 course. Okay, so to uh, why we need to publish our app in Play Stores, yeah, even though you can publish it elsewhere or can you can do self-publishing, yeah, so you can build your apps. Um, let me show you in the Android Studio that you can quickly build your app by um, by click this build and then a build bundle APK and then you can find the APK installer and then you can install it or drop it in whatever place that you like and then you can uh, share that installation to users and the question is why we need to publish our app in Play Store right because First, um, the Google Play Store is one of the largest platforms for distributing, promoting, and selling your apps. Yeah, mostly, roughly, yeah, roughly a one billion users access the Play Store daily. Yeah. So that's uh, the, the, that statistics um, is so interesting for developer to sell their apps. Okay, and um, since uh, you are need to publish to this system or this environment. So you need to follow several rules, regulations, restrictions, procedures, and so on, okay? So you need to pay attention because this policy, these regulations uh, uh, could change um, dynamically. I mean, um, Android, uh, sorry, Google tend to change their policy in, uh, in later time. So you need to pay attention about whatever they announce about their policy in publishing app in their uh, environment, in their Play Store, okay? And next, um, first, you need to create the developer account. So you, if you want to publish your application, you need to create a new developer account if you don't, uh, if you not have that have one yet. So you can go to the playgoogle.com slash console and slash sign up. And then you um you um need to log in or sign in with your Gmail, and it will automatically detect if that account, if that email already have a developer account or not. If not, then you will need to um fill in a basic information of your developer account, such as developer name, address, email, and so on. Okay, so um. The developer account can have three kind access level. Okay, so the account owner, the admin, and the user. So, uh, the account owner is is the one that create the account developer accounts. Yeah. So, um, these persons considered as uh, the business owner or the app owners. Okay. So, the account owner first registers the account in Google Play consoles. Uh, this account owner has full access to Play Console, can invite and remove user, manage individual permissions, and so on and so on. Yeah, you can read it uh, by yourself here. It means that uh, this is the one like a super admin; it can do every anything, 
you can do everything um, any features in the play console okay but uh, actually this account owner basically is just the owner of the uh, publisher of the developer yeah and these persons he needs to pay $25 to create the, the account. And these persons, yeah, the account owner can uh, delegate or create access level for admins and the user. So admin, um, it can, it, uh, it can, it, it have uh, management features, yeah, it can have uh, all permission per, uh, features and then can be set to different apps. So, so the account owner may have more than one apps yeah more more than one apps and then uh, it uh, they can uh, assign or delegate admin for its different apps yeah maybe maybe like that so the admin can handle different app uh, one app several apps yeah and the account owner can uh, change that okay so the admin can be given access to all or specific apps can invite and remove user and manage individual permissions doesn't need to pay 25 registration free okay 25 dollar registration i will talk about this later okay and finally the um uh the account owner also can invite user and admin also can invite user usually user is um the one that develop your applications you know maybe you have a it team it team that works on the apps so the admin can create a team several consists of several users and this user can have access to the applications play consoles okay so this user can have different level of access to global play console can be given access to all specific all or specific apps but uh, this user cannot invite user or edit permissions and doesn't need to pay 25 dollar registration free okay this is um information and description about uh, developer account account access level okay so um yeah just uh, like i said previously as a account owner you have to pay 25 dollars okay this is a one-time registration free and it's lifetime no need to pay annually there is no subscription fee um and you may publish unlimited number of apps in the play stores okay so compared to the uh, app stores which managed by apple which uh, as the developer and the account owner you need to pay 99 dollars per year yeah annually so um the the strategy of google is to reduce the developer costs and uh, and to make a more developers come and listing their applications in the in the google play stores okay so this um this registration free is so low i mean so i mean it's, it's not it's not pricey enough so make all the flower a lot of the flower comes and listing their apps easily in the play stores okay so uh, let's jump to how to publish your apps in the play store after you have created a developer account you need to um compile your applications and wrap your applications in the form of installations yeah and in the previous years in before 2021 you can simply create an apk yeah you can uh, compile and um i mean build and build apk here and you simply can um upload the apk to play stores to list it on there but since august 2021 new apps will be required to publish with the new android app bundle on google play okay so what is android app bundle it's a new official android publishing format yeah uh, that offers a more efficient way to build and release your apps okay so this app bundle have a lot advantages compared to the traditional apk apk okay first thing is it's smaller it consists of um several features such as smaller file size compared to apk let's take a look at this animation so in the legacy app apk um if you create an applications that um can have a lot of different features yeah for example it can con it, your application have multi-language supports or it can have HDBI, XDBI, different resolutions, yeah? 
it can load different resources or different resources. For example, if the smartphone users can handle HDPI, your app can show image, show resources with higher resolutions, but with a higher um, this usage, okay? And for uh, another features as well, okay? So in the traditional APK, every features here, every resource that available in your applications, no matter the, the user's smartphone can handle it or not, it will be wrapped with single APK. Make this APK uh, have a large size uh, compared to the bundle app, okay? And next, the, compared to the APP bundle Google from Google Play, which is uh, have these dynamic delivery features, so the app bundle um, will uh, will be uh, tailor made specifically for the smartphone user. So when your application listed on the Play Store and some user download it, it uh, the Play Store will tag it for the user smartphones and uh, and the Play Store can prepare your installations that consists only that smartphone user can handle. For example, if uh, the user is from uh, China, so it will include the language, Chinese language, and uh, and for ex another example, if the users can only handle STPI, so um, the applications, the installer will consist only for the STPI resource files. This makes the APK or the installations uh, smaller, have small size compared to the traditional APK, okay? So this is a nice thing, a uh, nice feature from a Play Store. And the question is how to create app bundle. It's very easy. And if you look at here, you can click build, uh, generate sign bundle slash APK. If you click that, okay, yeah, generate sign bundle APK, you can choose to enjoy app bundle, press next. And next, um, about key store, okay. Take a look at this, key store pad, key store password, and so on. So Android requires, requires that all APKs must be digitally signed with a certificate before they are installed on a device or updated, okay? So if you use Android app bundles, you need to sign only your app bundle before you upload it to the Play Stores. And Play, Play App signing takes care of the rest. Means that you need to create a unique key store ID that can uh, sign in your application before you upload it to the server. The key store, uh, it, uh, is a kind of proof that the key store owner is the owner of the app. So only the owner of the key store can modify and update the applications. Okay. And this is very, this is, a, this method is, uh, for security, you know, for double security that proposed by Google. So, um, as you can see in this image, uh, so the developer can create this a key, the the key store key, and then sign the app with this key, and after it, after it, upload it to the Play Stores. And Google also generate their own keys, and then this key is used to sign your apps with the Google key. And finally, this application, this installer, can download it by users. So. Um, you are unable to download this, this key from Google, yeah, because um, it's very, it's for security purpose. Means that an, um, your application is very secure, means that only you, the key store owner, can modify your apps, yeah, okay? So this is a for double security, which is a Google purpose for your applications listed in the Play Stores, okay? So how to generate the key store? You can generate the key store with two, two methods. First, you can do the self-certificate, yeah? Create the self-certificate or the second method, you can request the certificate from the authorized uh, certifications um, vendors, yeah? But let's let's say um, you want to create your own certificate with your own computer. So you can click the create new here. And then for the key store path, you need to store your password security, security so you can 
a find folder to store your key store. So for instance, I'm going to put it on download folder here. Okay, and then name your key store like whatever you like. So for example, week um 13c dot gks java key stores okay gks so it has extension of dot gks and then you have to provide password for this key store and the key itself also have passwords so you need to provide double password here for the first password to access the key store for the second password is to access the actual key inside the key store so um fill in everything it needed yeah in the uh, provided column here so it's i um this one is id just press ok and then yep as you can see here it's automatically fill it yeah with your self sign key and make sure this check box is checked. Export and create a key for enrolling publishers apps in Google Play app signing. And as you see here, the exported key will put in the desktop. Okay, you may change that. Next, um, you need to choose if you want to publish the as the debug for or the release. Of course, we're going to release the app. So we pick release here. And finally, you can Press finish, wait for several seconds because it needs gradles to finish its uh, projects. Okay, after done finishing building the Google Play app, Google Bundle app, I mean, you can locate your key stores in the specified folders, yeah, we did in the download folders, in for example, for mine here, and you can see something like this, this file. With 13 app.gks you need to store this key store somewhere places somewhere safe yeah means that if you lose this key you won't be able to update or upgrade your application so be careful with these files you need so you need to store this securely in somewhere yeah for example you can upload in drive folder and you can store in somewhere safe make a double backup and so on and so on okay and the app bundle should be located in the release folder, okay, uh, from the Android Studio project, your project name, app, release folder, and, in, and then you can find these files, the .aap, double AP file, Android app bundles, okay, so you need to upload this file in the Play Store to be published in the Play Store, so this is very important um a bundles yeah so the format is not apk anymore it's it's aapb aap format a bundle application format okay so after you create uh, the developer account and then you can sign in to your google play consoles this is how, how the, the preview or the ui of google play console it's on the left of the screen you can see different menu access only the account owner can see it. Maybe for the other access level, have different menu rather than this. And to uh, only the owner, the owner of the the account owner can create app. So you can see here in the right corner of the screen, it has this create app button. If you click that, you can create your your new app. And uh, you need to fill a lot of informations for your creating apps yeah for example your app name your uh, the app informations uh, is the app for uh, different for kids or for adult yeah i mean the target age users you need to provide that informations and the most important one is also the screenshot so before you create an application make sure you have several screenshots of your apps yeah several screenshot and on your the applications logo and others um requirements okay and after you done putting every every information it and it's time you to publish the app okay so before you really release the app for public you should test your app with specific group or open your test to google play stores because remember when it goes released to the public 
it can be read by users. So all users that download your app can can uh, give rating to your apps, can uh, uh, read a comment about your apps. So we don't want bad rating, right? We don't want bad comment, right? So therefore you need to carefully release your app. Make sure you test it before you release to the public. So um, the Play Store offer different features for testing purpose. Yeah, there are three testing phase that you can try. The internal testing, the closed testing, and the open testing. So what is the difference? The internal testing is a way to create your testing release that quickly distribute your app to up to 100 testers. 100 persons for initial quality assurance checks yeah you need to manually add user as tester okay so um as the tester you will be notified by google from email that um this developer invite you to try the application so uh, the tester will be given the link to download the apps to install the apps okay so this is very limited testing, yeah. In this internal testing, of course, other user, non-tester, cannot see your apps. Your apps is not searchable from Play Stores, okay? So this is called internal testing. So only invited user can test your apps. Remember, in every um, release staging, release stage, on each release, you need to upload the WAP file. So in the Play Console, you, you have to upload the WAP files here, okay? Simply upload it and and Android Play Store and build Play Console, I mean, will check the, your AEB for error or for other uh, limitation restrictions stuff. And it will inform you if if your apps contains warning or error that you need to um, carefully uh, handle before uh, publish it, okay? So that's, that's about internal testing. And secondly, the closed testing, what is that? Closed testing is to release the pre-release version, pre-release version of your app with a wider set of tester to get a more targeted feedback, okay? So with a closed test, you can create a list of tester by email address. So for example, list of um, uh, elder group, list of young adult, list of uh, others, uh, friends list, and so on. Each list can contain um, up to 2,000 users. So you can mean create 200 lists and um, this, Close testing to really test your applications on different target markets. So this uh, is different than it's uh, it's similar like in internal testing, but the difference is you can really separate the target group by creating a list of targeted uh, users. Okay, and you can finally can have an open testing, open testing or usually called beta tester. Okay, beta testing means that you can test uh, your app with a large group and surface your app test version on Google Play as a beta version. It means that user can finally find your app. Your app is searchable in the Play, test, Play Store. It will uh, show up in the Play Store and user can download the apps. And uh, the uh, one thing is user cannot give rating yet. Yeah. It can only download your apps, try your apps, and give feedback for your, app, your apps, okay? So the open testing is not limited to certain users. It's really open for public. Everyone can download and test it in their devices and give a feedback, uh, a, a good feedback or bad feedback, yeah, to the developers, all right? So this is a, a published status from draft, means that it's not yet, a release uh, for certain channel, internal testing, closed testing, open testing, pre-registrations means that um, a user can register for before the app launch, and if the app launch, it a user can get can have notifications 
uh, uh, when it's launched. Okay, so the productions, uh, the production is uh, is where the apps is finally released to the public, not bad anymore. Be careful with production release because user can give rating with your apps and user can also give comment about your apps. Be careful if your apps have uh, achieved low score in the rating to two stars or below, uh, the Google will take down your apps eventually. Okay, be careful with that. Okay, so very important to make a um, testing first before you really publish your app. Um, you just send to unpublish your app. You can also unpublish your app. For example, if you publish your app and you find a, a huge bug, a huge hole, security holes that you need to fix before uh, re-publish again your app, you can, you can take down your apps um, for intentionally. So you unpublish your app. For example, you want to uh, fix that hole, fix that security issues and republish again to later times. So, okay. <clears throat> Sometimes uh, for if the apps um, uh, not full or, or uh, I mean, if you have, uh, have um, uh, complaint have complaint for the users and not follow the regulations sometimes you google will remove your apps or suspend by google so be careful with that remember to always pay attention about um the policy from the google play stores okay so when what happened when you submit your app for publishing yeah in uh, whatever whether it's for internal testing close testing or freely uh, production release so what happened so uh, the thing is google will review your apps okay google uh, they have teams consist of humans and others artificial intelligence tester that can test your apps okay and because COVID, um, the, the reviewing process may uh, take a longer time than usual. Okay, it can it can one one day, two day, or one week or two week. I don't know. Okay, so uh, be prepared with these time constraints. Okay, Google review your apps. So the app update status when you up uh, when you upload the AAB and then submit your app, you may have this status um the in review status means that your apps is being reviewed the update rejected means that your app update being rejected because you not comply with google play policy or the developer distribution agreement and so on you can still fix it and resubmit app rejected if you not comply yeah um uh, the differences between the app to reject that is the app rejected is for for the first time when you submit your app in the Play Store part. But the update rejected means that the app is already listed in Play Store, but you need to update the app and the update being rejected. Ready for free review? Yeah, you've made one or more changes to an update that was perfectly rejected. Attempt to resolve the issue is the best your ability and you are ready to resubmit your update for review, okay? And this is several different status. And um, if your app doesn't have issues, means that your app is finally live on the Play Stores, okay? And when we should update or upgrading our apps. So um, you already have app that listed on Play Store and you need to update your app or updating apps. And because there is three common reasons why we need to do that. First, you may fix some bugs in your applications. You may add new features on your apps or you may remove some features because it's not longer um, uh, suitable for your purpose, for your app purpose. So you remove the, 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 the features and other stuff, okay? So how do we upgrade our apps? Bef before you um, generate an uh, app bundle for your updated app, 
you have to find the app version. So you can open the build creator module and look on the version code and version name here. So the default one is the version code one and with version name 1.0. If you make something, you make changes in your app, update your app, edit new features, fix some bugs. So you need to update your applications and re-upload, resubmit to the Play Stores. It means that you need to up, uh, increase the version code by one and you can change the version name by one like this or whatever you like. For example, like this, or like this, or whatever you like. Yeah, it doesn't matter because it's string that you can you can write whatever you like. Okay, so it doesn't matter. The matter is the most important is the version codes. So the new bundle app must have um, larger version code uh, compared to previous application that listed, listed on the Play Store. Be careful. If you submit same version code on below version codes that actually exist on the Play Store, the Google Play will reject it. Reject it. Okay. So this is several tips publishing app in the Play Stores. Avoid the default name Android Studio Project My Application. Google will reject it. If you create a new project, you will find that uh, Android Studio provides you with the default name My Applications. You should change that yeah, with your whatever uh, package name that you like. And if you still use My Application, Google will reject it. Give consideration to target AP level. Do some research for your target market and review the statistic data of smartphone targets. So if you want to target user in Indonesia or in your hometown, you have to some research about the users in your hometown. What can that smartphone they have? Um, or what kind of uh, specification of their smartphone they have? So you can really create application that um, designed specifically for your target user. Uh, pay attention about legal issues, yeah, like a restricted content, intellectual property, forbidden content, malware, spam, and so on. Uh, the legal issue uh, is there's a documentation about it. You can read it manually. You can read it by yourself before you publish your app. Make sure you're not prohibit or not comply with any of. I uh, make sure you comply with any uh, listed legal issue here. The target audience is important. So, so you, for example, if you if your app targeting children younger than 13 years old, you need to provide a privacy policy. You need to, I mean, uh, you need to show the privacy policy in your website, in your apps, and make sure the parents read it. Make sure the parents accept it before you can really publish your apps. If the app is designed for both children and adults, it needs to comply with family policy. So um, there's another policy that you need to take consider of, okay? So uh, pay attention with target audience, okay? Apps usually require a website. The terms and condition privacy policy should be accessible on the web. So you, be, uh, beside the apps, you need to create a website about your applications and put any necessary information in the website. Always allocate extra time before planning to publish the app. Additional time for the review and resolve the issue that might arise. So for instance, if you plan, if boss told you to publish the app on this December, at least you have to um, allocate two months extra before December. So for, uh, for uh, October, you in the in the late of in the first October, at least you already finished the app, and the app is um, ready to be submitted. Yeah, uh, you give extra time, okay? Because we don't know what happened, what review will you get? Yeah, okay. Uh, provide information about user access, username and password. If your app requires authentication to sign in, so for uh, for example, you create an applications that requires user to create a account or sign into your app to access the feature inside the apps. So you need to create something like a dummy account. You provide username and password 
to the Google reviewer. So the Google reviewer can try your apps and insert the username and password in your app and can have access to the whatever features inside the applications. Okay, if you do not provide this information, you will, uh, your release will be rejected by Google. Okay, 150 megabyte is the maximum app size for Google App Bundle. If you still find the app that more than 150 megabytes, it's because this app, that app probably published before 2021 August, but for 2021 August above, you need to, um, Pay attention about this uh, maximum file size. So, for, for instance, you create a game that take 500 megabytes, for instance. So, what should you do? First, you need to uh, create uh, something like downloadable, in app downloadable, yeah, in app downloadable sources. So, you put 450 megabytes in your server. And uh, and you have your applications. Your main applications should be uh, smaller than 150 megabyte. And when you when the user install your applications, uh, and it will require uh, the user to download uh, resources for the server. That's all still okay. Okay. So the solution is called play asset delivery. It means that you put the asset on the server, and when user uh, download and install your app and inside the app user may download the rest of the assets in within the app okay right right uh, that's about to publish how to publish app in the play stores okay next um the second part of this uh week uh, topics i'm going to uh give you knowledge about app performance how to improve the app performance okay um thankfully google record or lock whatever happened with your app in for the uh, uh, when used by the users and it lock as the android vitals these android vitals uh, can be uh, viewed by developer account or admin or users this report can be accessible from the dashboard and it highlight the crash rate enr rate excessive wake up and so on and so on it means that it gives you uh detailed information about your application performance okay i will discuss several uh, term here okay enrs what is that enrs is application not responding things okay so if we, this is an example of enr so um in the dashboard google can show you how many users encounter enr with your applications so what is an error in enr enr is application not responding case is when the ui thread of your android app is blocked for too long yeah probably um there's uh, several calls uh dnr calls yeah uh, first is maybe there is a not handle exceptions yeah for example you try to set text for an ethics text that doesn't exist in your layout so you got the null pointer exceptions these unhandle exceptions will trigger nr and another example if you have in the fit of the loop or um a long loop yeah long process in the main thread and the ui thread it will trigger the enr basically if the applications are not responding for five seconds long because there's a lot of processor process happen in your app uh, the enr will trigger so be careful with this yeah make sure your program doesn't uh trigger dnr how to prevent enr stop doing heavy tasks on the main thread yeah instead use threading yeah multi-threading uh, feature like intent service asynchronous text handler or thread from rx java and so on so make sure you split your long process in different threads check android vitals in google play console to get more insights of the anr so in the enr you can see in what pages or what features that trigger 
ENR. Yeah, is in if you see here. So that's uh, with that information you can inspect what pages, what activity, or what features, what codes that that occasionally trigger ANRs. Okay. So next, what is excessive wake ups? Okay, to extend back better life after its screen turns off, Android device enter a deep sleep mode by disabling the main CPU cores. Okay, so this is for extending better life purpose. Android automatically monitor apps for excessive wake up alarm and display the information in Android Vitals. So it means that if your applications tends to display the screens a lot of times, yeah, longer than usual, uh, it will record it and lock it in the Android Vitals. The wake up uh, is necessary if you create a games. Yeah, uh, means that. Um, your screen still waking up, even user not play with your game. Yeah, means more. For example, um, users put the apps in the table. The your game is still playing on screen, and maybe user uh, do something else, and, and the application still in a wake up screens. Yeah, be careful with these features because it can drain to the battery faster. So wake up seems like a good thing, but too many of them make your better life suffer. So uh, you have to check the vitals. If your wake up is too excessive, you may consider to uh, changing the apps, changing the features, changing the habit of your apps. Another excessive if excessive background network usage. Sometimes app can access in uh, uh, data on server through the mobile network in the background. And doing so rapidly can run down device battery. Yeah, battery. Android Vitals will show you log about the user's excessive when the app is sending and receiving combined total than more than 50 megabyte per hour. Yeah, uh, it will signal or give you report about it if your application have too much network usage access. Yeah, for example, you you try to connect to REST API almost every second, for example. Yeah, this, um, let's be careful with that because um, uh, the excessive background network can trigger and me hamper the better life. Okay, now about apps launching time. Yeah, app launch can take place in one of two states. Yeah, it's a cold start means that the app starting from the scratch and the warm start means that the system bring your activity to the foreground means that the app applica your applications already in background and you switch back to your apps it's called warm start so how to create faster apps launching time yeah because user tends to like um, to see to use your app faster okay first um, how to improve app launching time? Um, the, the first thing is you need to consider is um, do not take a long time to show your application logo at the beginning of the time or splash screens. Yeah, do not. Uh, yeah, one second is one a second is maximum times if you do want to display your logo. Okay, and. Secondly, initialize only those objects that are immediately needed. Yeah, so uh, do not load all of everything at once. Yeah, do not load everything at once. Avoid tested layout if possible. Means that you have um, what is called relative layout, and under relative layout you have nested scroll view. Under nested scroll view you have another linear layout. Inside the linear layout you have another layout. Now this is called nested layout. Avoid that if possible. But sometimes you you cannot avoid it. Yeah. But remember to not create deeper nested layout. Okay. So for instance you have recycled view. That's the that's the that is a uh, another example of nested layout inside the cycle view, if you know it, uh, it can consist another layout inside it. This is one example of nested layout. Move all resources initialization to so that the app can perform it lessly on different threads. Means that do not load all resources. Yeah, 
put your resources on the server and uh, your app should load it if needed yeah load if needed okay allow the app to load and display your views and then later update the visual properties that are dependent on bitmap and other resources means that loading bitmap and other resources should be done in different threads instead of the ui threads to make a faster load okay okay that's this this uh, this is the the strategic uh, tips if you want to improve your apps launching time okay that's it about the second part about app performance now we talk about the application security okay so uh, first thing is um if you use intent yeah if you use intent you want to trigger i mean not intent i mean uh, implicit intent yeah you want to trigger different app you want to interact with different app make sure you always use the app chooser app chooser is something like this uh, when you trigger an intent um, it shows you several different apps that can handle your intent yeah make sure um, this interaction strategy allow user to transfer sensitive sensitive information to an app that they trust yeah for example um your app can store password yeah or your app can share password to other application be careful with that so um well, maybe user can store the password in a memo and so on make sure um the user aware about it yeah that user can choose uh the app that they can trust okay so how we do we create the app user yeah for instance for instance here I have intent action send and then you can create a list of um query intent activities which is match all of action sends means that this uh code will list every possible applications then can handle the action send so you can check the size of this list remember this one is a list array list you can check if the size more than one mean that mean that you can use chooser yeah intent dot create chooser to display something like this because uh, uh eventually it uh, more than one app can handle your your intent otherwise otherwise if only one app can handle the intent you no need to create the chooser just call the start activity intent like this okay second about security tips you need always use the ssl traffics always uses https uh, secure to access the rest api server if you use web view uh, whenever possible not only allow listed look content in web view object in other words the web view object in your app should not allow user to navigate to sites that are outside of your control so do not click link that can use by user to access a website or source from outside your own control your domains okay provide the right permissions your app should request the only minimum number of permission necessary to function properly do not open every permissions Be, uh, only open permission when it needed okay when it needed yeah you should not open uh, all permissions yeah for, uh, permission for internet access permission for accessing logbook phone book and so on camera permission and so on okay store data security by default files that you create on internal storage are accessible only to your app this is called sandbox methods and android implement this protection and sufficient enough for most applications yeah generally avoid more word writable or more words readable when you work with uh, internal store data like shared preference shared reference library okay remember that and always perform input validation so for instance you have um what is called form when user can fill in the information like name ages phone number and so on always check for the user inputs yeah make sure you handle your the data properly before submitting to the next process example 
sent to the REST API, stored into the SQLite database, stored into self preference, sent through intent, and so on. Make sure you validate user input, make sure you uh, handle the user data before continue to next process. Okay, the reverse engineering. This one is nightmares for developer. Yeah, this one, uh, the security issues about reverse engineering is the one that uh, very, it's a even that very afraid by developer. What is reverse engineering? Reverse engineering is a method that can decompile your installations, your APK into Android codes in through the Java codes. And then finally, these Java codes or Android codes, Kotlin codes, can be reopened with Android Studio project. Yeah, that's a nightmare, okay? Because your codes, your source codes, it can be obtained by hacker and a hacker can see your codes. And by studying your codes, hacker can understand the whole, the security whole about it. The question is, why Google allow decompiling? Why Google reverse engineering it? Uh, these situations happen because the Android itself and the uh, Google uh, itself is open sources. Yeah, it means that APK, uh, Android built applications is open source, means that, I mean, the virtual, uh, virtual machine also open source, so everybody can see the code. That's the reason why it can be decompiled easily. Okay, so, this is very dangerous things to understand because there's a tools that can decompile your APK into the codes. Yeah, be careful with that and how to avoid it. Okay. Put important code on a server means that not every code should be put in the in the, your apps and sometimes you need to put it in the server, some and it means that user requires internet access to uh, call or work with that codes, yeah, to use that codes in the server. Therefore, if you a uh, hacker decompile your APK, yeah, it on it, it's not all code can be obtained by a hacker. So, second solution is use ProGuard. ProGuard is free Java class. I think I think it's not free anymore, like right now. Yeah, um, this. This software is used to shrink your apps into smaller sizes. It can optimize your app and final and the most important is it can obfuscate your apps by changing the class name, changing the um, variable name in two different things and different names like uh, like a um, and garbage like a garbage or un, un understandable things yeah so your uh your variable names is no longer like the way you put it before the variable name will changes into something that cannot be easily readable by others programmer yeah okay so the app will be uh, obfuscated by this program means that uh, it will give more difficulty for the hacker to understand the logic flow of your codes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's that's it about the reverse engineering. Okay. I think that's all about today's topic. Yeah. Um. I hope you can now try to publish your app. Yeah. Understand how to improve your app performance and understand about the whole the security holes that might happen in your app and you have uh, tools you have uh, understanding how about how to prevent that okay thank you to follow this class from week one week one until week 14 advanced native mobile programming i hope this course can have benefit to you and i hope you can create better app after you successfully um uh, pass this course okay thank you and see you again 
in the next lecture in the next different courses and bye bye for now no, no. I'm feeling brave